Good evening, Prescott Valley. Welcome to the Parks and Recreation meeting for June 9th, the month before our vacation. So we will start off this evening with a roll call, please. Commissioner Gummer? Yes. Vice Chairperson Pollican? Here. Commissioner Brinkman? Here. Commissioner Pierce? Here. Commissioner Gorman? Here. Commissioner Byram? Present. Okay, very good. Moving along, we will go for the approval of the agenda. Do I have an approval for tonight's agenda? Agenda. I'll make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Motion out a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Moving on, we'll go to the approval for the minutes for the May 12th joint meeting session. Do I have an approval of the minutes? Motion, please. Motion to approve the minutes. A motion to have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on. Aye. Done. Moving on, we'll go to scheduled announcements. We will start off with Brian with programs, classes, and special events. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson Gummer. Ah. Okay, so class is back in session. Um, June marked our restart of classes or rebooting of classes for the year after all the fun changes we've had this spring. And uh, some things that we have going right now, we have low impact aerobics. That's Tuesdays from 5.30 p.m. to 6.20 p.m. at the Civic Center. We also have Xing Yi and Bagua on Wednesdays and Fridays at the Civic Center. And Chido Ryu Karate. Um, the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Uh, so Chido Ryu Karate. I got to mess that up twice, thank goodness. Um, it's going to be at the Boys and Girls Club. And that class fills up really fast to the point that we have had to start new classes for it. So uh, if you're interested in karate, definitely sign up as soon as you can. That class fills up fast. And uh, we've got a few more. We've got basic dog obedience has started back up. Our tap and jazz classes, our ballet classes are back. And you can register for all of these online or go to Prescott Valley Parks and, or call us at Prescott Valley Parks and Rec at 928-759-3090 or, or register in person at our office. And we can also set you up with an account if you prefer over the phone or in the office. And three more classes we've got going already are painting and drawing workshops with Tom Blank. We have private dance lessons available for folks who want to learn how to dance. Maybe you're getting ready for a wedding or something like that that you want to practice up for. Or guitar, bass, and ukulele lessons with our favorite instructor, Pete West. He's been with us a long time. We're super glad to have him back going with classes. Uh, again, if you want to check out our classes, pvaz.net to register, get more inform information, or call us at 928-759-3090, or you can always stop by the office and see us as well. If you're looking for something to do outside of classes, we have uh, movies under the stars coming up. We have three movies that we'll be doing this year, and we have moved our movies to the amphitheater at Mountain Valley Park so that we can accommodate more people. So make sure that you stop by Mountain Valley Park Amphitheater to check out our movies on June 12th. We'll be showing Frozen 2. On June 19th, we'll be showing The Mighty Ducks. And June 26th, our last movie of the year will be The Lion King, and that's the 1994 Disney edition. Our movies start around 8 p.m., and uh, we'll have Chick-fil-A, one of our sponsors on site. So make sure to stop by them and grab a sandwich while you're there. Otherwise, you can bring a picnic, bring your picnic blanket, or some lawn chairs so that you can enjoy the show comfortably. We also have fall softball available. Fall softball registration opened on June 3rd. It's open, early registration is open through July 15th. So if you want to get the lower price at $270 per team, make sure that you sign up before July 15th. 
We have co-ed and men's teams available. Co-ed, co-ed games will be on Mondays starting August 10th, and our men's teams will be on Friday starting August 14th. If we have rainouts or we need to otherwise make up games, those will be on Wednesdays. And all of our games take place at the Mountain Valley Park Fourplex. It's a gorgeous set of fields, um, very well kept by our parks crew, so a huge thank you to them. And if you're late on registration for fall softball, uh, we do have a late registration available if we still have openings from July 16th to July 22nd for the cost of $325 per team. You can register online at www.pvaz.net or you can call us and we can get you registered over the phone or in person. Our phone number again is 928-759-3090. Uh, And I know the big question on everyone's mind is 4th of July. We're doing it. It's happening. We're going to have the best fireworks show in northern Arizona once again. Um, On Saturday, July 4th, you can join us at Mountain Valley Park. That's at 8600 East Nace Lane in Prescott Valley. Our event runs from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. with our fireworks starting at 9 p.m. We'll have food trucks a beer garden, we'll have live music from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., and the fourth fun zone will be open from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Wristbands are a little bit lower priced than usual because our vendor knew that our community could use a little extra cheer this 4th of July, and so uh, $15 wristbands gets you all day play. That's going to include some awesome water rides and also some uh, the rock climbing wall and all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you stop by 4th of July on Saturday, July 4th. Very good. Moving thank on, we'll, you. Thank you. Hope so much. We'll see you later. Moving on, we'll go back to Brian for the Neighborhood Meeting Community Park Center, our special guest. Good evening, Brian. I think that actually worked. Yeah, there you go. Let me give this a try. No problem. Tonight we have our guest uh, presenter this evening, uh, Mr. Reg Destry. He's uh, I've handed over the uh, controls to him. He has a quick presentation in which he will, he and his company will be hosting a community meeting over at Community Center Park, uh, adjacent to the Casa Community Center or Senior Center that we have there. And he will have a presentation uh, for us tonight. So, Reg, the floor is yours, sir. Good evening. Thank you, Chairman Gummer and Chairperson Gummer and board members for uh, listening to what I have to say this evening. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. I'm working with Verizon Wireless, and uh, we are looking to place a new site at uh, the Community Center Park. And um, this has been kind of in the works off and on for about seven years now. Originally, Verizon started to look to offload capacity from the existing site which is located at Mountain Valley Park. That was kind of the original site uh, for Prescott Valley. And in that time, we've built, I believe, four other sites in Prescott Valley. And now we're looking for something kind of northeast of the park, northeast of Mountain Valley Park. And so we looked at two things. We looked at George Anderson Park about three, four years ago. And I, as far as... uh, I've, I've heard, I guess there was a previous attempt to put a site at that park and um, it was unsuccessful. I, I talked to our engineering folks and they kind of directed this toward the uh, Casa Senior Center and the Community Center Park there. And so what we're going to be proposing is to replace a um, one of the parking lot lights, which are located at that park. And we got, I've got a little aerial here. You know, here's the park itself. Are you all able to see my screen right now with the photo simulations up? Yes. Wonderful. So here's just an aerial of the park. Uh, what we are trying to do is generally cover this area and improve coverage for Verizon Wireless. 
This site sits between a few other locations that Verizon has. Uh, the first one being the park, which I mentioned, Mountain Valley Park, and then some of the other sites. So here's Mountain Valley, and we have a site out by the racetrack, which uh, we call Coyote Crest. And some of those provide a little coverage on Fane Road here. We have a site at the corporate yard um, that's right in this area. So the sites are kind of equidistant and we've got the park, the corporate yard, the high school, also located over at an ADOT facility just south of 69 off of Glassford Hill Road. So it kind of leaves this area, this section, as something that doesn't have much coverage or very good capacity because this, the site at Mountain Valley Park is so busy. The only options that really exist that are not residential within this section are George Anderson Park and then the community center, which we are looking at. So as we zoom in here, you know, the, the obvious thing is it's surrounded by homes. Uh, my goal in trying to find a location here was to use some existing verticality. Um, all that is there is the parking lot light. Fortunately, there is a parking lot light right in the middle of the parking lot. And that meant that we could stay as far from all of the neighbors as possible. So this is the actual location right here of the lot light we are looking at replacing. Uh, we're gonna be going to the neighborhood, uh, sending out notices and having a meeting on the site on the 30th, really to get their feedback um, to find out what people's thoughts are, uh, if this is something, frankly, that can even really move forward. But we think that, or I think that this is a good option. And what we're looking to do is replace a 20 foot pole with a new pole that will actually be 65 feet tall. These are some simulations we've put together. And generally these simulations, when I put them together are kind of worst case scenario. Um, right now it's showing a pole that is gray. More than likely the pole will end up being a brown or rusticated appearance. And all the antennas would be the same color as well. This would be in line with what is there right now. You can see in this picture, the parking lot light at 20 feet tall is brown. What we're showing just so it shows up better is our pole in the middle at gray. Now this is from the nearest road to the north. All these pictures are from different sides of Manzanita Circle. And I apologize, there's a tree in the way of that one. This is from the south and is probably the, the clearest view of the actual site. Uh, we currently show coverage antennas, which are these uh, rectangles here, and a microwave dish. This may or may not have a microwave dish on it. Again, we want to kind of start off showing what we expect would be the most intense possible use and present that to the neighborhood to get their feedback, present that to the board to get your feedback and kind of come up with a plan that, that, that works best for the neighborhood. Now, this is from the West, uh, kind of gives you an idea here, perspective relative to the building and some of the trees on property. The only real options that I saw here for a structure were either to replace a, ball, to replace a light or to build a tree and there are a couple of trees at the uh, park here, but not really anything of the size that seemed uh, to fit what we were gonna be proposing here at 65 feet tall. Uh, frankly, this kind of harkens me back to Viewpoint Park, where for years and years, uh, we went back and forth on what that design might be and ultimately ended up, in that case, it ended up just being a monopole with close mount antennas. And as you can see here, I'll get back to one of the pictures that has a little better view, but we're essentially proposing these antennas up top again to be closely mounted to the pole and be a, a matter of a few feet off of the pole rather than uh, a long way off the pole because it's that width that tends to catch the eye more than the height. So I'm, I'm really quite excited to see what the neighborhood has to say because you know, we've got this site, it's early in the proposal stage, it fits with the zoning requirements, and we really need to see if this is something that the neighborhood is amenable to, and then make sure that this works for the park sport. 
We've spoken with all links already. Um, the terms are agreed with them on what the, the lease agreement will be, assuming this thing does move forward. And so I guess I'll just go through the drawings themselves quickly. And uh, if I get to prattling on too much, please tell me to be quiet. I uh, had that happen in Scottsdale two weeks ago. I was talking for too long. So here's the general layout of the park. Here is the middle of the park where the ball field, or excuse me, where the parking lot light is located that we would propose to be replacing. Uh, southeast of there, there is currently a gravel area in the parking lot, and I will zoom into that in a second. And that would house our ground equipment. So in addition to the pole, there is some equipment on the ground, which would be surrounded by a block wall here. Uh, that does not take up a parking space. And um, what you see here from the elevation is that that block wall will match what the park has there right now and will completely conceal the equipment uh, so that folks standing there are not able to see the equipment. It will essentially just look like a, a block wall enclosure to passersby. Um, the, uh, the overall design, like I said, is a pole. The lights that are on the current light pole will be replaced at the same 20 foot height and will still operate in the parking lot the same way they have. As you can see, there are some bollards around the base that are meant to protect the pole. Uh, this should not impact parking at all. So I mentioned before, the ground enclosure does not take a parking space. This is actually in a small island already, the, the current pole. So adding this pole or replacing the pole that's there should not impact the parking. I would point out one thing, uh, I mentioned the lease earlier. Uh, there is language in the lease right now that there would be a $10,000 capital contribution provided by Verizon, which is meant to be used for the asphalt work um, on the parking lot. I know that won't obviously cover everything, but that parking lot is in pretty dire need of, of some work on the surface. And so that was part of the negotiation we had to try and earmark some of that money to be used for park purposes. Because I know sometimes we end up doing agreements on uh, municipal properties and none of that revenue goes to the group that's ultimately authorizing this use. So um, I'm not sure if you have any questions. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty early on in this process. I'm gonna be sending out notices for a neighborhood meeting which will occur on the 30th. I'll be sending those out probably next week and then I'll start getting feedback from the neighborhood. There were, I believe, close to 150 people that were going to be getting uh, notices, and I also will place a small sign on the property. And so I'd imagine I should get uh, a decent amount of feedback from the neighborhood. And I appreciate the fact that uh, you were able to put me on the agenda this evening, so before your break, I could at least give you some idea what we were proposing. And if you do have any feedback that you'd like to offer right now, I would love to Love to hear what we have to say. Any questions, comments from staff? I mean, from the commission, I'm sorry. Ron, anything? Yeah, I have, I have a question actually, so. Okay, Scotty. Yeah, Mr. Svetz always talks about coverage, you know, our circles, we love our circles. Uh, with this, what would be the coverage and or the number of sites? Because, you know, as, as well as you try to, they are a little bit of an eyesore. And, but the same on the other, you know, side of the coin, they're a necessary evil for this day and age. Um, how many per capita are you expecting for a, sound, a, a, a town of this size? Um, a lot of it has to actually do with the amount of capacity, um, the amount of users on the site, whether it be from uh, phones or other connected devices. So again, this site originally came around in 2013 and at that time, the Mountain Valley Park site was basically the only site in town. This was meant to provide offload of capacity. So it wasn't really even new coverage, but in fact, just having more customers, more devices. And as you can imagine, there's been quite a swell of usage in the last seven years. Uh, a site of this height, once a network is fully built out, especially with the like 4G level of technology right now, the site would cover about one and a quarter to one and a half miles as the primary site. So you know, you're kind of in the section here. 
it will have quite a bit of overlap with Mountain Valley Park, but when you're on your device, you'll find that the site that has the best, strongest signal and most capacity will be the one that'll work. So it will actually probably reach a bit of Fane Road, um, but primarily it will cover this section and be the primary site for this section because it's about centered in the section. So I don't know if you can see the, um, let's see, let me get back to the hand. That's a little easier to see. So you've got your section here. This will primarily be the coverage area plus it'll get out into this area. This does us very little good, but it does help offload capacity for the park. It will also overlap with the site that's at the corporate yard so that there'll be a bit of duplication of coverage and it actually will provide much better in-building coverage for this area. Now, when the park gets really, really busy, that site tends to get overloaded for capacity. I know I, I took my son up there for a soccer tournament last year and I went to the site and it was pretty full, even though not all the fields were even being used. So it will help offload a bit of that capacity, but primarily at 65 feet tall, it would be something that would cover, like I said, about a mile and a half in every direction. And then that would be in building coverage. Outside, you'd probably get a bit further than that. And that's why it'll touch some of the cars on Fane Road. Thank you. I'm glad to see you are involving the public with this and really nowadays I don't think you're going to have too much negativity because cell phones are, are, are a thing of the time now where <clears throat> excuse me most people are using now and they want that usage to be available and, and used so I'm glad you're involving the public for their comment I don't really think you're going to have too much backlash on this I know that I don't have any concerns that I see would really be a major option on anything like this so i'm 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 all for it brett anything no comments for me bill no nope, okay sorry just one more thing reg do you actually have data for um the amount of verizon wireless users in prescott valley that will i do not have uh, the data for the amount of wireless users uh in prescott valley proper okay um sometimes that can be pulled by uh the different area codes but that really is just customers it doesn't do a lot like uh, my I, I am a Verizon customer, as you might guess. Um, if, if you were to look, I've got five phones under my account because I've got my mother in law who lives in a different area. Uh, there are probably quite a few customers that don't even show up as Verizon customers in the area because they may be on a family plan with some other family members. I, I, I think the easiest way to kind of think of it is when you look at the percentage of customers that each of the large carriers has, you're probably looking at half of, at least half of the phone customers in this area being Verizon customers and probably more than that because I know there are not a lot of AT&T customers up that way. Very good. Yes. Ron, any questions? Okay, well then Reg, Reg, I thank you so much for your presentation tonight. We'll all be anxious to hear back from you and, and find out your information you receive and we'll go from there. Thank you for your presentation. Wonderful, and um, now I will try and send this back to you by changing presenter. Let's give this a go. Perfect, thank you so much. Let's see, should I send it back to Ron or to the organizer? The organizer. All right, there we go. Did that work? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, moving on, we'll go to the department update with the start with the director's report with Brian. Good evening, commissioners, again. Uh, in regards to my report, just a couple of, of uh, highlight and touches. Of course, as we all know, we've been having uh, lots of fun throughout our community and our nation and the world in regards to COVID-19. So staff has uh, been de definitely tackling those particular items. Uh, as you can imagine, we've had a number of different cancellations. We've had a number of different closures. Uh, but also through that, we've also been transitioning into limited openings as well as creating that transition plan for future openings as we go through a, both a week by week and a month by month process. 
Uh, some of those you heard this evening as it related to all of our different programs and activities, special events and services, uh, but also part of this plan was also transitioning staff into remote office processes and then back into the office again as well as then uh, some of our staff also had fun in regards to welcoming all the staff back into town hall. And so we adopted uh, those uh, 19 procedures, if you will, for admissions into the facilities, not only staff, but public members as well for a brief period of time. And now we have basically flexed back into a full opening process uh, at our facilities. Uh, we'll begin adding greater and higher level capacities to our programs and services and facilities. You'll hear some reports on that a little bit later. Uh, but as you're well aware of, our master plan is under process. That was presented to you in a joint work study with Parks or the Arts and Culture Commission and was also presented uh, very favorably to town council in their work study session. And we are planning for a June 25th adoption. Uh, so more as that will go through, you'll get more information and data on it, um, moving those types of things forward. In addition to that, we've had some staff conversations with our neighbors over at Wanderway Park. We're going to be reviewing some of our current bench locations and trying to enhance that and work with a volunteer group there. Uh, also, we're able to meet with our seasonal pool staff and they are showing that they are coming on as some very strong gyms into our programming services. You'll hear more about that a little bit later this evening as well. Uh, Hope, Jason, and I have conducted some interviews for a, our athletic coordinator position. We're very excited about having uh, that staff member join us and in a few brief months they'll also introduce themselves to you. And last but not least, a number of different grant applications have been processed. And I am very happy to say that we're working in concert with our friends of Presque Valley Parks and Recreation on some of those applications led by staff, uh, and whether those items are found within the art and cultural services, uh, but also in our park and recreational activities. Um, just received the other day notification from Arizona Game and Fish Department that our Heritage Fund grant to enhance our fisheries both at uh, Fane Park and uh, the Yavapai Lakes uh, right adjacent to Mountain Valley Park has been approved by the Game and Fish Commissioners and staff are working on those paperwork and contractual documents uh, for our agreement. So hopefully we'll get that moving along as we're feeling a little behind the times as our t uh, process uh, for accomplishment was actually to be completed at the end of last month, but uh, we're going to work to get that done as soon as possible. So those are some of the brief highlights uh, out of uh, my report, and I'm happy to ha myself or staff in attendance to answer any questions concerning any of the other related divisional uh, reports for you. Comments, questions? We frequented the park during the old COVID shutdown. We couldn't help but notice how how busy each and individual park was just for people to get out and about um, with social distancing in mind, of course. And it just, even even during those times, the park were immaculate, um, very well kept. They did a fantastic job staying up on their duties and diligent processes. So my family was really impressed with the whole thing. So good work. I have a question. <clears throat> are all bathrooms in the parks now open? Yes, uh, I apologize. I don't choose to recall the date in which that happened, but yes, we opened up okay. all of our uh, restroom facilities at our uh, parks throughout our system. Uh, they have a maintenance schedule to them that is quite enhanced, okay. as well as then our playgrounds are open and again, uh, a sanitation process for those as well. Uh, so that we're meeting all of those uh, Requirements that so you're, you're wiping down all the playground equipment. Is that what you're saying? Uh, we actually have uh, a sanitation um, I guess the best term to call it's a, a hosing down if you will okay. uh, In which we can go through with equipment um, In which one individual can get out there literally hose down uh, the, those playground units in, in their entirety um, and then literally move to all of the other locations that we have Basically, it takes almost a staff person um, a day to get that all knocked out. In addition, then also multiple uh, times of approach to the restroom facilities at each of our parks. 
So the spraying down is water, hot water? Uh, it is a water with a uh, germicidal uh, for best terms uh, that goes on there and then it uh, dries to the touch and you're ready to go. How about, I don't know, with kids touching it and then touching their mouth, the, uh, the germicidal is safe? Yes, it's hospital uh, utilized uh, product. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Good. most definitely. Good to know. Yes. All right. Any Anything other questions I can help with? Anything else? Hearing none, we'll move on to the chairperson's report. So I was, as our town grows, I was wondering about impact of, of parks, what they have on our property values. So recently, 33 studies were published that measured the impact of distance from a park on the sales price of a residence. A positive premium emerged and showed that the larger the park size, the higher the premium is likely to be for your home. Preferred immunity amenities offered at public parks such as playground equipment, barbecues, facilities, basketball hoops, pickleball courts, etc. People are prepared to pay a higher percentage premium for close access to them. Premiums generally were highest for properties closest to a park and influence declined when the distance from the park started getting further and further. Both positive and negative impacts on property values are possible. Some of the negatives were noise and such uh, lighting. Positive premiums associated with the proximity recognized that they were likely to decline as distance from the park increased. So studies show that the homes closer to the parks can be worth more than the homes that are further away from a park. So as we're building homes in all these subdivisions, and we see that they put parks and things in place to sell homes, I believe. What we have is the, the parks in our town are accessible and we need, we're gonna need more as our housing uh, grows in Prescott Valley itself instead of some of the subdivisions. And some of the amenities we offer in our town of parks, such as our swimming pool and things like that, the uh, subdivisions don't offer swim lessons. They don't offer events that the people have to come into our town and utilize. I, I call it our town, we're all the same town, but I'm old part of town. I'm not in a subdivision. So we can't forget to look at what we have in our town and realize that if people are coming and buying more homes that aren't in subdivisions, we're still gonna need to look at parks for those homes also. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, we'll go on to the tree advisory. And all I have is things are in place. We haven't been able to meet with uh, COVID going on and we haven't heard much more from what we're looking, we, we got, Grant submitted. Yes. All that is done and... That is correct. We uh, completed the last uh, components of our grant application with Arizona Forestry where we planted 15 new trees in Santa Fe Station Park. Uh, so that was our allocation and allotment there. So uh, Nick Rubluski, our park supervisor, is wrapping that up, completing those uh, rounds of paperwork so that uh, reimbursement can be sought. Uh, we were granted um, uh, grace in regards to our application because there was a uh, significant um, volunteer component of that that unfortunately we lost with the cancellation of mm. our Day event at Santa Fe Station. So they were very accepting of uh, alternate components to, to meet that match requirement. Uh, so we'll have that completed. Uh, we've got a few other components that we'll be working on through the year. Uh, we're going to take this summer month uh, to start getting those in line. And I believe we're going to also be at a point in time where uh, now uh, we can go ahead and uh, reassemble our tree advisory group and then officially uh, go through those planning documents and then present back at our August meeting uh, to have those uh, items moving forward. So. Those are our plans for right now uh, and advancing the Tree Advisory Board's agenda. Very good. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, we'll move on. We'll go back to old business. You know, we never get enough of hope when she's here. So we always would like to bring her up and hear from her some more. And this one's about Mountain Valley Splash. 
Thank you, Chairperson Gummer. Okay, some of my numbers disappeared. Possibly, maybe. I think we can blame that on Brian. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we'll just keep you out of trouble. It's Brian's fault. It was great. May was wonderful. It was That's like right. a week. It was the best week ever. <laughs> You can see the schedule up there. Um, we've had <laughs> perfect. Um, <laughs> I can tell you we have 31 lifeguards hired, and um, four more are in the process of being onboarded. So we'll have 35 total lifeguards for this season, in, and additionally, seven office or concession staff. Uh, in addition to working at Mountain Valley Splash, these young folks also help us with events. So huge thank you to them for being willing to uh, work at our events and uh, help us with those. They're huge help. They make a great difference. They were a lot of them at the drive-ins recently, and we really appreciated their help in getting cars parked park safely. Um, We've updated cleaning procedures at Mountain Valley Splash to reflect our recent changes with COVID. Um, disinfecting spray um, is used during transition times, which have been built into the schedule. Oh, you found it. There's a text. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so you can see in the schedule that there are some gaps in service. Um, those are just short gaps to be able to ensure that we have the safest and cleanest pool possible for the public. Um, so open swim is Monday to th through Thursday, 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And then again, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. On Fridays, uh, we have those same options. And then a twilight swim available as well from 8 to 10 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays, we have 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., 2.30 to 5.30 p.m., and 6 to 9 p.m. for open swim. You do have to register for open swim. That's one of the changes we made this year um, so that we can keep a line from forming in front of the building and get people into the pool quicker and make sure that people are able to uh, keep a safe distance from each other and not have to wait in that line um, like typical summers. Um, we had 986 people pre-registered and that was just for the first week so that's pretty amazing. In person we also were able to sign up 604 people so we did still give that option knowing that some of our community members may not have ac um, access to internet or phone as easily as other folks. Uh, we have had a total of 1,590 people and four days we reached capacity. Our capacity has been um, limited to 125 people per open swim um, in order to keep safe standards uh, based on state and federal guidelines. Oh, can I just interject real quick? Of course. Uh, so, um, yeah, my girlfriend is the, the pool supervisor and it's the 125 just for those out there listening um, it's total so 120 people come to the pool and they're at capacity no matter what happens so if five people leave five new people cannot come into the pool because then that'll be a net sum of 130 people into the pool does that make sense yeah, exactly. And that's exactly right, Commissioner Just Byron. want to bring up that point because yeah. uh, I think that's just a little tough with the capacity, like what it, right. it's a little gray area there. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? exactly, yeah. exactly. Time and age is just one of those things. So we'll only, in that three, any given three hour period, as Commissioner, Commissioner Byram said, you'll only see 125 people that whole time. And that's just to be able to keep a safe and clean environment for everybody. Um, and so we also do lap swim. You do not have to register for this one because there's such limited capacity. We allow 12 participants per um, session. And that's Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 a.m. So far, our, our first week had a an attendance of 48 people for the whole week, which is pretty good for lab swim. Um, historically, it's been a little bit lower, so we've actually increased numbers there. Therapy swim is Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 9 a.m. Uh, we've had 12 folks in attendance with that, which again, that number may seem a little bit low, but historically, it is a little bit lower for that, and we've actually uh, reached or surpassed past numbers. Um, 
going along with the safety thing. So the disinfecting includes all of our deck chairs, all of our kickboards, pool toys, and other equipment. We also have measures in place to keep people distanced six feet from each other at concession stand, at the slide, anywhere that people would line up. And um, we're using CDC approved solutions for those um, that will not irritate skin, that are um, used in hospitals and other places. Um, and uh, with the increased time to wipe everything down, staff is very confident that they're able to hit all the high touch points and especially places in the restrooms, locker rooms, or um, again, you know, light switches, door handles, that type of stuff that people are touching a lot. So it's, it was an adjustment, but our, our aquatics coordinator did a great job of adjusting quickly, and uh, we're super happy with her and the rest of our staff for doing such a great job of working to keep our community safe and still be able to uh, allow people to come to the pool. Any other questions about Mountain Valley Splash that I can answer? Sounds good. Excellent. <laughs> Going through everything. <laughs> okay, for programs and classes, um, we have reduced capacity uh, similar to the pool, so about 50% of what we would normally be able to accommodate. For the month, we put a hold on classes until June. Um, our uh, Outdoor and Community Education Coordinator worked with our risk management team to determine how many people can safely go into any of our rooms that we use for classes, as well as the Boys and Girls Club. She also recommended, and we have recommended to our instructors, that they teach outdoors whenever possible. And so um, we have about 50% of our uh, instructors already returning, so I believe it was six out of 14 have already returned, which is amazing. And one one of our 14 instructors will not be back till 2021, only because she is expecting a child, and so she's going to be taking a little extra time off. Um, we'll have 10 out of the 14 back by July, and they'll continue to do some reduced capacities in classrooms. We'll continue to encourage them to do outdoor classes. We'll be doing cleaning before and after every class as well um, with our approved solutions, and just being really careful wherever, whenever we can. Our instructors were given um, very specific information about how to hold class safely, and they were asked to return to us a proposal of how they would abide by the guidelines provided to them. It's been a great success. We're very happy to have our instructors back. Our classes are filling up. Um, people want to get out and do things, so it's, it's really great that we're able to um, bring our classes back. Any questions about any of those items? Any questions, comments? <clears throat> Hearing none. Is that all you've got, Hope? <laughs> I'll let uh, Mr. Elmer talk to you about facility rentals. Very and good. It's always nice you could come, Hope, and, and inform us and see you. So thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Thank you. Now we'll go to facility rentals with Jason Elmer. Good evening, commissioners. So I'm going to talk a little bit about facility rentals. Uh, as you know, with COVID-19, things all took drastic changes very rapidly. And one of the things that had to take a break was facility rentals. Now, we've since reestablished facility rentals. We are asking for social distancing while we do have these classes that we allow people to come back to. and. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are seeing a big increase in rentals. Uh, tournaments, for example, are pouring in right now. We, I believe, have three softball tournaments in the month of August, and we're looking at another one in July, and we have another one in a few weeks. So the facilities are getting utilized, and there is a big demand for them at this time. We will continue to 
the rent the facilities using our best judgment and being as careful as possible to provide adequate space to the people that are renting the facility. Special events. Thank you. So we had uh, three drive-in movies. This last weekend, we had two Friday night and Saturday night. And that was a league of their own, uh, June 5th and 6th. We had over 1,200 people attend. The drive-in movie on May 29th was Lilo and Stitch. That was a very well-attended special event. Uh, we had to turn people away. There were so many people that were interested in being there that evening. And we had over 1,800 people uh, attend that event. Wow. We filled the parking lot to capacity. So we are moving forward now with movies under the stars that will be at the amphitheater that was discussed earlier. We're going to provide as much spacing as possible as we can there due to the COVID-19. So it's going to be a little different. We're going to use the sound system that's established at the amphitheater. And we're going to have our screen there elevated on a trailer. And I'm hoping for the absolute best. You know, I think I think anything we do for the town right now, I think hope said it best. When she said, people just want to get out and do something. That's correct. And 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 I'm so happy that we're moving forward with just trying to provide something for our people. I know it's been a huge demand, and and we're stepping up. We are making preparations and operational logistical plans for the Fourth of July. We met just recently with the CAFMA Police Department, Public Works putting into place our traffic control plans, our fallout plans, and our security for during the event. We are still looking at a nine o'clock show. We are looking at 3 p.m. start for Freedom Hero Party Rentals, excuse me, caught myself. And we are going to expect a large crowd for this event, I would imagine the parking lots are going to fill quickly. Approximately how long is the fireworks show? Approximately 25 minutes. Okay. Comfortable. Yeah. And how were you able to handle traffic after drive-in movie nights with that many people? Did you have police then or was it your, your staff? We had staff and we had police and the Arizona Rangers who were a very great resource for us. Uh, some excellent people were assisting us with clearing out the parking lots. I can imagine that was a pretty good project to take on there. <laughs> Trying to get everybody out of there. It was uh, interesting. <laughs> Next item. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, as far as special events go, we as an organization are bringing back what we can. We're working with the Chamber for Rhythm and Brews. I'm sorry, PV Days will incorporate the bands that we had chosen for Rhythm and Brews event and will now be part of PV Days. We'll be in support of that. 24th and 25th of July. So that is something that we are assisting with at this time. How about some of the events that we canceled during COVID? Are we going to look at back, what was it, cops and bobbers and some of that thing? Are we going to try and bring some of that back or are we just going to add it to next year? I think we're going to be really focusing on what next year uh, we'll be able to provide for us. Uh, we're definitely looking at trying to bring in uh, what is part of our full operational cal calendar as it exists now, but also reflecting uh, what those needs might be as it re uh, reflects on uh, guidance. Um, those events that we did have were, like I said, we've got our next fiscal year budget that's going to be coming online in July. Uh, part of uh, those factors of what COVID-9 has done and with some businesses uh, shuttering, unfortunately, sure. um, and that slow regrowth that we're all transi transitioning into, um, we have forecasted and very rightfully so that our uh, revenues 
are also going to be mirroring and directly reflecting that. So we've already reduced next year's uh, fiscal budget by nearly 10%. Um, and in doing so, it may require more, um, but we're also looking at what possibilities from a positive standpoint there might be. So we're going to look at things. We've been in a purchasing freeze. We've been in a hiring freeze. All of those different types of things to adequately react to what the fiscal uh, conditions are. And so there might be some cause effect uh, that we're feeling in a reduced budget next fiscal year. Uh, but we're going to try to get the biggest bang for our buck uh, with how things move forward. Okay. So back to your point of um, the gold fever days and uh, the community fishing program, cops and bobbers and those types of things. Uh, we may see po portions of that reduced, but others moving forward in full force doing those things. The well, um, bottom line is we're still offering everybody a chance to have some kind of event. No matter what, we're still moving forward. Yes, and as uh, our, our manager reflected earlier tonight in regards to athletic tournaments and those mm. types of things, the doors are opening up. Um, and folks have uh, very high interest in being able to come up and especially during the summertime, uh, everyone does want to come up here in regards to uh, not only do we have what I can boastfully say and proudfully say best uh, fields, uh, they're burning up down there. Ours are yeah. nice and green and lush and full, uh, making those available to folks, whether it be baseball, softball, soccer. Uh, we've even had some interest, uh, I believe it was rugby or lacrosse. Uh, oh, wow. So a variety of different things there. Uh, potentially looking at being able to reschedule uh, some soccer um, in spring activities and seeing what opportunities we might be able to provide in the fall. Uh, so lots of things are jumping on and off the table, but more on than off. So. Great. I hope we can accommodate them all because it helps bring our town back. That's right. part of the other strategy. Yeah, yes, very, sir. very good. Brian, have we, have you, we been able to keep all staff? Yes. Uh, with the with the downsizing. Very much so, and that's a, a top down philosophy uh, from council and town management. Um, and it goes back to the practices that we initiated back in 0708 when we went through that extreme rough patch oh, of yeah, the recession. Right. Um, and so that is a commendable thing that council has made sure of adhering to that philosophy that we do have a piggy bank and we can rely on that. Yeah. Um, so that mm. with a loss of staff also becomes an extreme loss of service. And we all have need for the services here in Prescott Valley, whether those be roads or utilities, parks and recreation, library, you name it. Um, and so we basically were able to grab a hold of that uh, bunker plan, if you will. Um, and uh, through the years of feeding the pig, we were able to squeeze a little bit out of them um, to make sure that we were kept whole as an organization. Good. So. Any other questions, comments for Jason on old business? Hearing none, we'll move on to new business where Jason's going to present us the budget capital projects. So, it's a huge budget this year. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot going on. <laughs> so with the cutbacks that we have going on, we did have some reductions, but we are going to be taking care of some projects here in Prescott Valley. And one of those projects is gonna be Santa Fe Station, the landscaping project that's going on over there. Um, Mr. Grabowski, as you heard, has almost completed the, the packet, bid packets on it. It'll be going out to bid. We're gonna be looking at doing Oh, I can't even begin to say the quantities of riprap that are going in. Benches, uh, a very nice water fountain, which we've you know, not had many in our parks for a very long time due to vandalism, but we're gonna give it a shot. So he will have that completed here and we'll have it out to bid. It looks like we're looking to award July 9th, if I'm not mistaken. So. The other uh, project that we have included in this year is it is a piece of equipment and it is our turf vac. Uh, the one that we currently have, I believe, was brought into service when Mr. Grabluski was in elementary school. <laughs> so uh, it's been around for quite a while. It is a piece of equipment that we have had to rebuild the engine on and with rebuilding the engine on it, 
um, the shafts that come for the vacuum itself can't seem to hold up to it, so we put a governor on the motor trying to keep it from snapping, and it's been a constant patch job. So we're uh, going to be able to replace that this year, and we're going to replace it with something that we can also use that do the leaves in the parking lot along the curbs. Oh, man. So we're looking to get some multitasking out of this piece of equipment. All right. Good. Let's do it. And we have some concrete repairs going in. Each year we try and take care of concrete repairs throughout the parks, various locations. We do our best to get out and take a look and see what's going on. Currently there's concrete repairs going on in Mountain Valley Park. Those will be completed before June 30th. And I imagine Mountain Valley Park will see some more in the near future. Uh, there could be some at Fane. There could be any location that is dubbed necessary. Stone Ridge seems to be one of the usual suspects lately for concrete repairs. Ugh. So as you heard, uh, Mr. Elmer indicated it's a very large capital uh, projects budget. Right. And he's being very facetious with that. Um, one of the continuing elements uh, for Santa Fe Station Park that will follow a lot of our uh, hardscape, if you will, with all of the riprap, uh, DG, uh, also decorative gravel that will surround the interior of the site. Uh, we're going to uh, continue the project and do a secondary bid process with it uh, into the fall season because that's when we'll go into all of our trees and shrubbery and supporting uh, irrigation systems as well um, so that we can complete the park in its uh, fullest sense, if you will, for that nine or ten acres. Is that right? Correct. Um, so we'll have additional trees, shrubbery, um, DG work, those types of things that will come in. But what we want to do is ensure their survivability and get them out of the summer months uh, so that we can go through that fall period with them. So it'll kind of be a little bit of a two-part. The important part is if we can get the rock, the DG, and the riprap rock uh, prior to or in concert with monsoon season, it'll be a more of a beneficial factor for the integrity of that park and its users that we have out there. So that's how that particular project's gonna go through. Um, you know, sarcastically, we were saying it's a big budget. Um, you know, we understand and that it did take some significant changes. We had uh, new restrooms at about a three quarter of a million dollar project that we were looking at for Mountain Valley Park. Other pieces of equipment, vehicle uh, replacement, a number of different items. Mm -hmm. So I think we had about security cameras. Yeah, security cameras. We had probably 1.5 to 1.7 million dollars of capital projects that became part of the budget reductions mm -hmm. uh, to reflect, and that was doing the right thing with the uh, a business plan in regards to hey, we're going to plan for 10 percent. It could be more. It could be less. And so we. I think we've got a good game plan out there and when we can get, uh, get the bigger boots put back on in the future fiscal years, those projects are literally ready, ready for approval so we could be able to get, begin to move forward. Uh, we've contacted those vendors that we've done the research and, and uh, work with and let them know that we're just on hold. They're not canceled, but they are on hold and we'll look to see what October might be able to bring us in future fiscal years with doing that. So. Very good. I mean, it's always easy for people to find a negative, a, a, a sidewalk crack or a, a tree that's dying in the park. But overall, our parks have been unbelievably taken care of with a small staff. You haven't got there too large of a staff to take care of all the parks that we have. And, and I am very proud of our parks in this area. And whatever we can do to them, I think it's wonderful what you guys do. And I just, I just keep on being so happy that things are taken care of. It's like I said, it's easy for people to go to a park and go, oh, look at that, look at that. But overall, parks are, are very nice. Thank you. Grass is well taken care of. Our grass is always nice. Well, it makes the rec staff happy too because they got a place to play. So it's, you know, it's a very uh, well organized and they take care of each other and it's a good team out there. Yes, we do. We have. We have, and we have for had a long time. And nothing else from you, Jason? Not at this time. Well, we were so happy you could make it this evening. What a double whammy we got tonight with Hope and you, Jason. We're so happy you guys made it tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Very good. <laughs> Thanks, guys.
Okay, moving on. We'll go to new business, the 2021 meeting schedule. Has everybody had a chance to review your meeting schedule? I believe it's the last page of your packet. Yeah. Does anybody have any problems with those dates? We usually try and keep it on the second Tuesday of the month so everybody gets that ingrained in their brain and, and we just know that we have meetings the second Tuesday of the month. Any problems or questions? Yes, yeah, second Tuesday of the month and then there are uh, two design gaps if I remember correctly. One is July, uh, we tend to like to have a little summer vacation opportunity and then also again in December. Uh, plus, that's we have quite a few different special events going on that time. But this is more or less a traditional historical calendar of operation. And if the commission's good with that, staff would just ask for a motion for acceptance, and then we'll begin publications for the next fiscal year. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, scheduled meeting minutes for the commission for 2020. I second it. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very good. Moving on. We have... The time has come for the new election of officers. <laughs> uh, with that, I would like to offer Brett Pollock in the chair position. He's been here for a while. His work schedule has kept him from stepping up and, and doing He's did it, done it for a while, a little bit. And work would got in the way, but now we hoping that your schedules maybe a little freed you up a little more. And I would like to offer Brett the, the opportunity now to be our chair if everybody is in agreement or if somebody else has another nominee. Wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh, goodness. Okay, so I have, and there's no other nominations? Okay, I would like to nominate Brett Pollockin to be our next chair for the uh, August meeting. And with that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Brett, congratulations. It's, it's, I'm excited for you to step up and become seasoned. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> and roasted. <laughs> um, next, we have a vice chair. And I know that, Bill, you've been in a career where you've had to probably lead many, many meetings and, <laughs> and do things like this. And, and I know that you're a little more experienced than some of the others, maybe. And I would just like to nominate yourself, Bill, to be our vice chair, which would include, in case our chairman can't be here that night, you would be involved to run the meeting that night. I could stay in touch with Brett, you bet. All right, if, if you will accept, I, any other nominations? Hearing none, I would like to nominate Bill Pierce to be our vice chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. So our new vice chair is Brett Pollockin, vice chair Bill Pierce, and we have a position of secretary. The secretary is third in line in case Brett or Bill can't make it. They would run the meeting. So I have Scotty. And I have Kay. Hey, Scotty. Available. <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> I got her. So it, it, I don't it's, mind. Yeah, it's okay. It's been rare that the secretaries had to step up. But I think, I think you know, you and Kay are on board, and it's, it's good to get the experience. It's good to get the, the extra meetings and the knowledge. So, Scotty, if you are willing to accept a nomination, I would like to accept Scotty Byram as our secretary. And any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and nominate Scotty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Very good. So we have our new board for the month of August. Uh, let me say I will step in wherever I'm needed. Yes, yeah, because as we always do. You know, she said that after the nominations. Were <laughs> well, but, but, but like, I knew. And, that's the thing. And, and the longer you, you stay with us, your, your time is going to come. I we're, know. We're going to throw you in there. <laughs> <laughs> so Didn't sound like a threat, more like a promise. <laughs> so. <laughs> so moving on, we'll go to other. So I have a little bad news for our commission this evening. We are losing two commissioners that have been very good, very strong, very fun, fun commissioners for us. The first one would be Elaine Fallman. She has opted to re retire from our commission effective immediately. She gave us 11 years total as a commissioner. 
she was the gal I picked on the most, had the most fun with, and she gave it right back. I wasn't expecting that, but <laughs> <laughs> she she gave it right back. And it, we were a, we were a, a fun fill for her in a time where she came back, and we kept her happy and and involved in things and it was good for her also we hate to see her go because she has been so opinionated and and strong and fun she was one of the one of the great ones and then along with that we're also losing ron brinkman that gave us i believe 11 years ron and that's another strong commissioner that was the chair many times and led very well and his uh information and his education on, on getting all of this stuff from Parks and Recreation and just taking it and running with it and helped many, many of us commissioners learn more about some of the things Parks were doing and he did a lot of investigating. He did a lot of work. Sometimes you get a volunteer that comes here that wants to sit on a council or a commission and do things, but Ron really came in with volunteer as wanting to be a person that improved our commission and improved our town and he's done that so ron any comments um i just keep it very short it's been my pleasure serving with all of you on the commission it's been a pleasure working with brian and of course we all know that kathy really runs a place but right <laughs> it's just been my pleasure and and i wish you nothing but success well, Ron, I hope you're not a stranger. I hope you will stay in touch with us, and, and maybe once in a while you can come to an unscheduled public appearance so we would have somebody come anyway and, and at least say hi. <laughs> I will not be a stranger. <laughs> okay, very good, Ron. Thank you so much, Ron, for your 11 years. Uh, we couldn't have asked for more from you, so thank you again so much. Moving hi, on. Thank you, Ron. Ron, Ron, I'd ask one favor if we can take the 50 emails down to maybe 10 or 15 on a monthly basis. I would be appreciative of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. We'll go to unscheduled public appearances. Looks like we will have none this evening. <clears throat> Our next meeting will be in August on the 11th, right here in this auditorium at 630. We get the month of July off for everybody to enjoy some time off and family. And if there's no other questions. I have a question. Yes. About the Santa Fe, uh, our brand new beautiful park. Yes, ma'am. We were over the summer supposed to have a, a grand opening. Yes. Are we still going to try to do that? I would really like to, uh, just for a number of different reasons. Um, but ultimately, just to kick it off, uh, shout it out to the world, all those different types of things. Uh, what I'd like to do is look at that approach once we have the shrubs, the trees, all of that landscaping component done. Um, we've reached that point of completion. I think it'd be very appropriate um, if that can happen sometime between September and November. That would be my goal. And of course, um, hopefully the world is returning to, or at least Arizona is returning uh, to its full state of normalcy um, so that we can all come out and enjoy that. Um, plus, I've got a side little hedged bet with uh, Commissioner Gummer in regards to who can whip who in pickleball. So we're going to give that a good run. Oh, get really? it taken care That's of. That's on the Brian. opening day. Oh, it's, it's hands down me. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll need oxygen. <laughs> I think it'll basically result in a serve, maybe a serve fault, and it, it could be a, a stalemate for the maybe five minutes that we might be able to last through right. that maybe. process, the two of us. <laughs> then, so, yeah. then we'll need an alcoholic beverage when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So, but yes, that that would be some of our hopeful uh, celebration. Good, good, good. All right. And you know, as we're talking about the parks and things now, and with our budget being cut and such, it's if it's a time now if the community or businesses or anything would like to contribute a tree <coughs> or a bench or something in their name or or their honor of their families or something, give the uh, Parks and Rec's office a call seven five nine thirty ninety, and they can sure step up and do if they would like to help us out with some of our needs and wants and, and you know like i said to to put your name in a park and have a plaque that has your your name on it or your kid's name or somebody like that that's something that's going to be there for many many years for those yeah. for your grandkids or or your children to enjoy so it's a, it's a great opportunity for right now for people if they've 
have the money, have the funds, and they can do it. It's a great thing to do for our parks. Very much, and and another accolade and shout out to Commissioner Brinkman because he and his family have uh, been able to to do that. And, uh, yes. So it's a wonderful thing to have in our park system and show it off. Bet. Okay. With that, anything else? Hearing none, I'll ask for an adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I have a motion to adjourn and a second. I second it. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. We will see you in August, Prescott Valley.